Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you for being here with me today. This is a collective message for everyone. So this is a spiritual message that universe wants to get out to you. So if you have clicked on this, chances are there's something good in here for you, something that's going to help you along your journey. Before I begin, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, I'll love you forever if you do. Um, it would mean a lot. So thank you so much for being here and, and of course, being a part of my YouTube fam. Now, um, this is going to be a little pyramid reading and I'm really going to be looking at what's culminating in your life here. So call it synchronicity, call it fate. You've been brought here for a reason. And... There's a lot of structural changes that are happening within you, whether you're aware of it or not, in your day-to-day -day life, in your career, in your love, whatever it is that you've got going on, right? And I want to start this reading off by looking at the bottom row. And what we have here is there's a lot of stresses that have been coming into your life. Um... And you can see that I'm, I'm really drawn to that Queen of Swords straight to the hangman. And there is some sort of words that you've been waiting for. Um, or there's a conversation that needs to happen, but it's been a long time coming. The Queen of Swords faces the hangman. Or it's a conversation some other person or some other energy might not be ready for at this very time so i'm getting some of you are caught in a bit of a limbo phase and i'm getting it's a stress it's agitating you but i feel like uh, this hangman it's just sort of left you in, an, in in a state where you're like what's going on you might have been ghosted you might have not heard back from a certain person or a certain um party and you, this is something you keep thinking about but it's almost like spirit wants to tell you the more you keep thinking about it, the more you keep putting pressure on it and you're trying to make it happen faster than it needs to. Sometimes things need to happen in their own time. You know, um, it's hard. I know it's hard. Um, we want them to happen sooner. And, you know, just being in that kind of energy, it really sucks, but Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise, like if there's, you know, there's always two sides of the coin. You can pick the negative side or you can pick the positive side. The negative side is going to make you feel all sorts of things that aren't very nice. Positive side might make you feel good things, might make you feel more hopeful, might make you feel more optimistic, might make you take more initiative. So I want to say that there's that situation here and you really have to trust the timing of the universe and you have to tr trust yourself with this. Um, and it's almost like you have to go easy on yourself because there's a lot of you that have put, especially like mentally, I'm getting that you've picked things apart and there's, there's a criticism that's coming here. So this is you critiquing your inner child here. Queen of Swords is critical. Okay. She's super vigilant. She's, she's, she's hyper vigilant. And I get that you've been really critical about this and it's almost like you're nagging. Some of you are nagging yourselves, but it's, an, it's not in a good way. It's not in a constructive way. Or you're nagging this other person to be, do, say what you want them to do. But there's someone here who's not in an energy, who's not ready. The hangman is, isn't ready. Um, or it's like there's someone here who doesn't believe in themselves enough. So I'm getting something about beliefs that's coming up. You're critiquing your own beliefs. It could even be someone around you critiquing your beliefs. Either way, I'm getting a heavy criticism here. And so you guys just need to lighten the load. I mean, we all go through it. Um, you know, and... Uh, the two of wands is here. It's reversed. It's something about not having options. Some of you feel a bit blocked. You're not knowing where to go. I don't know if this is social media. When I see the world, I think the worldly connections, right? I think of what you see online, what you see on one side of the coin. Remember, there's always two sides. So I feel like 
some of you, the world around you, this could be your environment, this could be where you work, the family that you're in, the social media pages that you follow. This is your diet, guys. Like, diet is not just food alone. Diet is what we take in, what we listen to, what we read. You know, it's what we feed ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually. And a lot of you are just, you're out there. And spirit wants to tell you you're only doing a handful of things or you could be doing more or you're kind of limiting yourself because two of ones the option card is reversed it is the card of taking chances and it is the card of making things happen but it's reversed okay there might not be movement right now and hence why you're feeling that nine but this is a heavy load to bear this bottom row and, and, you know, there's a lot of things happening right now in the world, um, astrologically speaking as well. And there's a heaviness um, because the nine of swords is that adversity, right? It's the stressor. But the nine is also an ending. So I don't know if some of you have had some sort of ending here uh, with a, a person, a connection, an ending in your life recently that has caused these stresses. But let's look at it as the foundation of what it's going to culminate to, that you're going to build up from here. And I feel like there's hope. I feel like I'm getting a little bit emotional as I say this, but there's some of you out there and you feel like there's no, there's no way you can turn or that you feel like there's no option, but there is a nine is always transformational. Um, a nine is always powerful. Okay. It's the next phase. And even as I say this, I'm, I feel like I'm getting like this is bubbling, bubbling up inside of me. I don't know if some of you are relating to this in a sense where you feel like, things are just bubbling up or you're bottling things up but I feel like the nine of swords is telling you to let go of some things I don't know if it's this heavy criticism I don't know if you need to let go of what this world is um, or some worlds that you might be part of that might not be healthy for you um, or you know letting go of trying to critique yourself into being someone you just know yourself not to be you know this is about the truth at heart, right? Um, yeah, I feel like it's a really spiritual message. I do. But I feel like the Nine of Swords, there's, there's a darkness that some of you are going through. And I feel that darkness is showing up, you can see, um, horizontally um, in the placement, in the horizon placement. You've got the Seven of Cups. So this is that uncertainty um, that you're living with. And I think a lot of you, if you're seeing this, your horizon, your future, what you're looking for ahead, you feel uncertain about it. Seven of Cups is, it's uncertainty. It's emotional upheaval. One day you're feeling this way. Next way you're feeling that way. It's It could also be around a water sign um, or it, it's an emotionally charged energy. But the dark silhouette is like the shadow. So something about shadowing. Okay, some of you are shadowing someone else. Um, okay, or you're, you're in, you feel like you're in the shadow of your life. You could feel like you're in the passenger seat of your own life. You're not in the driver's seat of your own life. Some of you need a, a, a kick up the bum here. You need motivation and you need... Uh, you need to work on that inner gratitude because you have so much around you, so much to be grateful for, so much to live for, so much to do and be and experience and have and manifest. But I feel like on the horizon, the Seven of Cups energy, I think it's about organizing yourself, your thoughts, organizing your emotions. Um, and that's not always easy to do. But you know what the Seven of Cups reminds me of? A vision board. Um, I actually, I actually need to do my vision board soon. Uh, that reminds me it's been in my mind for a while now and I'm not surprised it's come up in this reading. Um, 
visualization and uh, manifesting work hand in hand with each other. Okay. As someone who uses this and has manifested so much in my life, I can only speak of its merits. I'm telling you, create a vision board on your computer, on your phone, print it out, put it wherever you need to put it, keep it in your thoughts, keep it in view, because this is going to help settle out that seven of cups energy. And it's going to filter out what, when you look at the vision board, you'll know, this is what I'm leaning towards more. This is what I keep looking at. This is what I keep looking up online. This is what I keep seeing in my day to day life. It's interesting how the universe will converse back to us through our desires. Um, but there is a sifting of emotions that needs to take place. I don't know if it's the conversation with the queen of swords that you're waiting for. And then it's like, oh, I'm going to have that conversation and then I'm going to know how I feel. It's almost like the feelings have to come before that conversation. And it could be in a dialogue, right? It could be what you're saying to yourself, um, not necessarily what you and someone else are saying from each other. Um, but if that's what's, you know, and if that's the at the very center of the Seven of Cups is at the very center of this whole situation in this pyramid, I'm seeing that if that's at the very center, this is at the very core of everything that you're building up in your life right now. And your emotions, the seven of cups energy is at the very core of that. So there's some, there's some work, there's some sifting. There's some sifting and sorting and organizing and decluttering and compartmentalizing that needs to happen here. And we all have different things that work for us. Uh, but I'm passing on the message. I'm letting you know that there's something you need to work on here. You know, we all do. We're all a work in progress. Okay, we're all Michelangelo's. We all need to we all need to carve the best version of ourselves here. So just think about that. I think spirit is drawing me towards that for a reason. I think for a lot of you the four of cups in a past placement on the left is telling me there's an epiphany or a realization from your past that's going to help you and it's a surprise it's a blessing in disguise it's something that could come unexpectedly an unexpected turn of events it is from the hand of god so the universe spirit your guardian angels your protectors there is a benevolent energy but it could come from your past somehow it might be a past life connection it might be some opportunity that's coming from the past that feels familiar. It could even be a deja vu moment that sparks that epiphany that's going to help you with that, the core, which is the Seven of Cups. So I wouldn't be surprised if the past comes back, but it's going to be more helpful than it has ever been for you. And then you're able to move forward. Queen of Queen of Pentacles isn't a very supportive place. It could be an Earth Queen. So we've got a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo here. You've got an Air and the Earth Queen. So it could be an Air and an Earth figure in your life. Uh, who's going to help you? I'm I'm getting support when I when I look at the Queen of Pentacles here. I feel like it's. I feel like she's she's in a supportive role or a supporting role. You've got a bit of luck next to this person. Or they're going to bring you a little bit of luck that's going to change things here for you. Now, I feel Queen of Pentacles in the top of the pyramid, which is which is the Five of Wands, is a strong fire energy. Okay, if you're dealing with a fire, uh, an Aries, a Sagittarius, or a Leo, um, they're coming through quite strongly, right? But you've got someone in a supportive role. But the Five of Wands is is it's some heavy energy, so you're. You're coming up, it's a climax, and it's coming up to some heavy energy. It could involve other energies, so other people, their advice, their opinion, their thoughts. It could be friends, family, relation, people you're in relationships with. Um, 
but there's a lot of different directions I'm getting. So I'm getting there's something, there's something here that you know truly resonates within your heart and it's a direction you know you want to go at. But I'm getting the universe is sort of testing you here through these people because there's people here who won't who won't agree with you or won't believe in you or won't say things that will uplift you because they're in a different place. They're in a different direction. Um, you're zigging, they're zagging. So there's a mismatch of frequencies happening here. And it's going to bring a lot to light. It doesn't have to be a negative experience. I just think the five of ones is it, it is an argumentative energy but look all their ones are so different and they're pointing at different directions and it's not a cohesive energy so what that's telling me is is that there's only so much there's only so much of people's energy that you can take on here. And the only way to grow, you have the tree of life. You have the tree of life in your reading. The only way to grow is to do it from within. And I think this is a very powerful reading. Um, I don't think I've gotten this emotional in a reading for a long time. Uh, but I feel like I'm feeling the weight of people's energies. And I think in where we're at energetically, that five of ones is super powerful because it's, this is, I feel like there's a lot of people's energy and it's just dampening you. It's, it's not letting you be the best version of yourself. It's not letting you be truthful to who you are and where your heart wants you to. Uh, wants to take you so I think it's going to illuminate a lot I do you've got the star of creation so I feel like a lot of you are in that creative uh, process you're in the creation process of of creating um, and I feel like there's other energies around you that the universe is trying to show you just how much things are changing and just how much people no longer maybe align with what you're wanting, with where you're at, with your energy, your frequency, your vibration. And that's okay. It's not a bad thing. Because to get to the Nine of Cups, which is the wish card, okay, which is having everything your heart's wishes, dreams, uh, spirit desires, you have to go from the seven, you need to go to the eight, and you gotta go to the nine. And what is eight? Eight is the soul searching card. So this consider this reading a big sign for you to go out there, go forth and do that soul searching for you. And, and it doesn't matter what people say or think or think they know or know what they think. All that matters is that you're doing with what's in alignment with you, what's truthful to you. And, you know, that's big. I really feel like that's a big, big sign for you. Um, and I feel, I feel there's something within you here that's going to spark a change. And I hope this reading is it. I hope it needed to reach you. Um, it's a spiritual message more than anything, for sure. But, you know, if you've clicked on it, there might have been something here for you. And I'm glad I got to put this message out because I think a lot of us needed to hear it. I needed to hear it myself. So I hope me in me sharing this message, it has helped whoever's out there on the other side watching um, and going through this kind of energy. Know that you're not alone and know that you have support and know that you are being protected here. You've got the hand of God here. So you've got divine intervention. So you've got someone looking out for you here. So that's really nice to see. But 
I'm going to leave it there. So I do hope this reading has been helpful. Much love to everyone out there. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And until next time, bye for now.